Vivek, like always, pleasure to welcome you. Always, my friend. <laughs> you know, we always talk about entrepreneurship and the essentials of entrepreneurship. But you are into everything, everywhere. And we are trying to focus now to, for today's conversation on how medical and medicine, the technology is evolving and how we are speculating across the world. So we don't actually need now a uh, you know, billion dollar investments to come up with these products and research. Anybody, anybody in the world can do that. Uh, how do you think that you know, the technologies uh, that we take for granted in Silicon Valley and in the West can actually percolate to the lowest level and empower those okay, people? Now I'm going to challenge your question. I'm going to now tell you how technology is democratizing and how technologies out of India can disrupt the US uh, uh, you know, in, in innovation system. There's a company in New Delhi um, called HealthCube. Health, Health Cubed. Um, they had built a device a few years ago which is a platform for medical instruments. Basically, it's, it's, now the new version of the device looks like an Apple TV. It does 32 different medical tests. The same medical test as you, you do in a hospital, uh, starting with uh, you know, EKG, blood glucose, uh, and then it does HIV, dengue, malaria. It does cholesterol tests. Uh, you, know, you name it, almost every common test you do in a hospital, it does for you. Here, when you need to get um, a, you know, an EKG or a cholesterol test, you have to go to the doctor, hospital, whatever. It costs hundreds of dollars. That's what the, the you know, medical establishment gets built. And guess what it costs for this device and for the test? The device retails for $1,200. This is full list price. The cost, the development cost is less than half of that. The test, the individual test, cost about 10 and 15 cents. I have uh, one of these devices at home. And I can do a cholesterol test anytime I want to. I can do a 12 lead EKG anytime I want to. I can you know, uh, check for a whole variety of other symptoms anytime I want to. I get the results immediately. They upload to the cloud on uh, a very simple app. I get the diagnosis. Um, I, I, you know, I can see a, a doctor anywhere in the world who can now uh, give me sophisticated diagnosis. It gives you preliminary data and you can analyze it and say whether the data is good enough, but you can share with the doctor and get results immediately. This device could upend America's medical system. Imagine now if you had a device here where you see Berkeley, you had a device here in each building where if you wanted to get a blood test, you're not feeling well, you go and you get your blood tested immediately. And if the symptoms aren't, um, you know, if the indications aren't good, you can now call up a doctor on your iPad. And the doctor happens to be in New Delhi or happens to be in um, Mexico City. And the doctor charges you 50 cents for the consultation because it's a short consultation. The doctor has all the data and, and you can get advice. That would upend the medical system because we go from now spending the majority of our medical dollars on cure to prevention. Because we'll prevent disease because we have the data necessary to prevent it. Imagine now having AI, artificial intelligence software, running on top of this device and now monitoring you 24-7. You know, because we already have Fitbits, imagine having other sensors and you upload it to the cloud and you can get more sophisticated, sophisticated blood tests any time you want to. It would upend the medical system. This is a made in New Delhi technology. It's already being used in Jammu and Kashmir for maternal testing on a population of two million people. In the next 12 months or so, it's very likely that there'll be 10 million people in Bangladesh who are being tested with this device and another 10 to 20 million in um, uh, Mexico and Peru and possibly Brazil. Within 24 months, the goal is to have 100 million people using it. The cost of this will drop even further. By the time we're done, it'll cost $200 for the device and the test will cost you know, five or 10 cents each. So this is the power of technology built in New Delhi. Now, um, why am I taking it? Why am I talking about uh, Mexico and uh, and uh, Bangladesh and other countries? Because to bring it to the United States would, you know, cause all sorts of legal problems. The, doc the medical establishment, establishment would fight it because it threatens their very survival, right? So we're bypassing the United States. And when I say we. This is a technology I've been watching for the last three or four years. I joined the board, I invested in it because I want to take this to global worldwide. So that's why I'm saying we now. So we're taking it to Latin America, to Africa, to uh, parts of Asia. And that could disrupt the US medical system. This is what's possible right now. That before, the United States and Europe had a monopoly on innovation. You needed to spend mega bucks on developing world changing technologies and you needed access to the research labs here and then the venture capital system over here. Now it doesn't matter. VCs have become irrelevant. The, uh, um, the large you know, research labs have been developed because entrepreneurs anywhere and everywhere can now change the world. 
as I'm telling, as, as we're doing with HealthQ. You're hitting a very right point. I was going to mention to you some time ago. I had interviewed the co-discoverer of Lipitor, right? And he had said that they had invested about a billion and a half of the research of that particular right. product. And some company from India or some other country cannot just steal that or take that product away after 10 years when the license goes away and start producing it. So they said there is a cost associated to it. But you give a very good example. We don't need to invest that much in research anymore. We don't need to invest that much in research. And you know, when it comes to, again, uh, the traditional medical establishment, the biggest change that's happening in it is um, are the advances in genomics and the microbiome. Uh, genomics means that our DNA has been sequenced. So far, Lipitor and all of these drugs that we take were based on symptoms. So they would cure one particular symptom. But you know, you and I were brought up, uh, were born in India, right? Uh, I was brought up abroad, but the fact is that we grew up believing in holistic medicine. Ayurveda was, uh, you know, very common, is still very commonly used in India. In China, you have uh, um, acupuncture. In other parts of the world, you have other forms of traditional holistic medicine. The Western medicine system has been based on curing particular systems, and hence the arrogance of people like the people you, ones you're talking about, who say that we're big, we're mighty, we have these billion dollar drugs, no one can challenge us. Advances in the microbiome. You know what the microbiome is? When you went to school, your teacher taught you that we're made up of cells, and cells has a nucleus and DNA and so on. The teacher was wrong. We're not made up of cells, we're made up of bacteria. We're somewhere between two and 10 times more bacteria in our body than we have cells. What's regulating our health may not be um, what we think it is, it may actually be the bacteria, the microbiome that's regulating us. Every week there are studies being published which demonstrate the effect of the bacteria in our gut. The key, key to losing weight, the key to maintaining, to, to curing disease, the key to our mental state may be the bacteria in our gut. It may be a matter of taking feces from one person. When I say feces, I literally mean shit from one person and transplanting it to the tummy of another person to, uh, to bring health. So who cares about these Lipitors and all these Western medicines when the treatment may simply be taking a cocktail of bacteria and that changes your, uh, your body's functioning. And of course you have to also change your lifestyle and habits and live healthier lifestyles. It's, it's a sophisticated ecosystem. It's not just a matter of taking one medicine and assuming everything will be okay. But imagine now getting back into an era of holistic health based on scientific evidence. You know, if anyone wants to challenge me on this, Google microbiome. Look at the news alerts on microbiome. Every single day you'll see major studies being published about it. And what this is doing is ripping the entire foundation out of the Western medical system because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that to, uh, to lose weight, to cure disease, to cure mental anxiety, you take a cocktail of shit. I mean, you know, this it sounds gross, doesn't it? But really that is, what's yeah. being discovered more and more and more. To date, the, uh, the, um, um, the results have been in rats, in other animals. Now they're doing anim human studies. The Chinese, for example, did a study on humans and determined that weight loss could be done by bacteria. That was just a recent study, but there'll be many others in human beings over the next five years. We're five or 10 years away from this becoming you know, established science and based on human studies. But you have already have a movement called pro probiotics. People take probiotics and they swear by them. You know, that may not be as crazy as it seems. It may well be that there's a science to probiotics, and that's what's being discovered right now. So the, the basic foundation of Western medicine is being challenged. And the beauty of this microbiome is that entrepreneurs can do it. The cost of sequencing is dropping to, to uh, you know, practically nothing. Within five years, it'll cost as much to sequence an entire human genome as it does to purchase a cup of coffee, which means that anyone anywhere can now participate in these advances. Computers, supercomputers, that can analyze data costs practically nothing now. Our smartphones, by my estimate, are 40 times more powerful than, than query supercomputers were. So we've got supercomputing. AI is something that's now democratizing because you can download AI code and use it to analyze sophisticated data. So gone are the days when you would have, you know, people like this arrogant brat you talked about, who talked about Lipitor and the billion dollars they're spent on it, saying, saying no one can replicate us. He's wrong. Now, anyone, anywhere can, can upend the entire medical system and almost any other industry there is. Uh, we're talking only about medicine in this right now, but okay, I can take you to almost any industry and tell you about entrepreneurs anywhere can upend entire industries. So what are the lessons here for entrepreneurs then? Because one is to come up with the research and a product. The other is to have market penetration. It's very difficult for 
young entrepreneurs. That's one angle. The other angle is for the American corporations or any other big corporation, no, even the, in India. The lessons are very simple. That stop thinking that uh, you can't do it. You can do it. You can change the world. Any entrepreneur anywhere in the world now has access to the same knowledge. The things I talked about, you can Google them. You know, they don't take my word for it. Google them. And you already have access to supercomputers. You have access to AI. You have access to massive amounts of data. You have access, you have problems to solve. Anyone, anywhere can change the world. Forget the past, forget the, uh, the you know, thing, business plans which you have to put together, forget venture capitalists, forget the power, you know, power brokers, forget uh, industry leaders. Anyone, anywhere can change the world now. So snap out of it and realize that you can own the future. That's the message to entrepreneurs. Yeah, the, the question would then would be, uh, not everybody can get a Vivek Madha on their board. So you don't uh, what need is me. I mean, No, you, I mean, you don't need me to do it. You can learn this yourself. You know, if nothing else, watch some of my, like, go to my website, wadwa.com, and read 100 or 200 articles, okay? That'll tell you some of the advances that are happening, and then Google them, because most of the articles are out of date. <laughs> because I wrote, you know, many of them a year or two ago. In a year or two, the world changes. Or even better still, read my book, Driver and the Driverless Car, How Our Technology Choices Will, will, will Make the Future. That book will give you a roadmap on the things you need to learn. Even that book is out of date now, because things keep changing every six months or so. But the fact is, the book is still relevant because it tells you where to look and tells you what's possible. Yeah. Okay, Vivek, like always. All right, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it so much. All right. Thank you.